Hello, my name is Eli Collins Brown and I am the director of the Coulter Faculty Commons at Western Carolina University. This presentation will discuss whether or not our program evaluations are assessing the true impact of our academic development programs at our institutions. By the end of the session, you will be able to compare and contrast methods of gathering, analyzing, and presenting data, discuss the benefits and challenges of measuring the impact of an educational development center or unit, and gain access to at least two freely available evaluation sources. Here's my story. I began my career in higher education by joining the Center for Distance Education at the University of Texas at Arlington, where I was an instructional designer and technologist, partnering with faculty to design and develop their online courses. I did the same type of work for the University of North Texas, working with faculty from many different disciplines. When we moved to Peoria, Illinois, I decided to pursue my doctorate in curriculum and instruction in higher ed with focus in online education. I also knew that I needed to be teaching online for experience and also to have a place to explore what I was learning, so I joined faculty teaching online at the University of Phoenix in 2003. I taught for them for five years. After I completed my doctorate, I began working as the first director of instructional technology at Methodist College of Nursing, now known as Methodist College Unity Point. In 2009, I joined online faculty at the University of Maryland University College, now known as University of Maryland Global Campus. I still teach for them in the Learning Design and Technology Master's degree program. The next move was to Kalamazoo, Michigan and Western Michigan University, where I was hired as the first faculty member of the newly formed Homer B. Stryker School of Medicine. I helped them with their curriculum design and their technology choices, as well as achieving their preliminary accreditation. When the school opened, I then moved over to the uh, main campus to become the director of the Office of Faculty Development and teach in the Educational Technology Master's Degree program. Five years later, we moved to North Carolina and I took a position at Winston-Salem State University to open up the newly formed Teaching and Learning Center. I was there for two years and then a little over a year ago, I joined Western Carolina as the director of the Coulter Faculty Commons, which includes the LMS and educational technology team, as well as the educational developers. I've been active in, pod, in the pod network since 2004, having served as chair of the scholarship committee, as well as the digital resources committee, and I served on the board of directors. I also became involved in the Quality Matters project back when it was the FIPSI grant project as an instructional design peer reviewer. I am still a master peer reviewer for Quality Matters. I've been an OLC member since the turn of the century and was involved in the USDLA or the United States Distance Learning Association for about 10 years. So I tell you my story and the many places that I've been and the multiple experiences that I've had to give you an idea of why I'm interested in measuring our impact. I've heard a lot of anecdotal stories about impact. I'm sure all of you have heard over and over again about how faculty who go through a design seminar for putting their courses online more often than not then realize they need to go back and redesign their face-to-face -face courses. That's impact. We also hear about the impact our center, of our center's programs and services from faculty who share things like that if it hadn't been for a faculty development center, they would not have achieved tenure, or they wouldn't still be around, or that they definitely wouldn't, wouldn't be the exemplary teachers they are today. This is great qualitative data that definitely demonstrates impact on teaching practice, but we've got to get more formalized data in order to not only demonstrate our impact, but also to be able to improve our programs and change as needs change, just as we are experiencing now with the COVID-19 crisis. Educational development has been doing a good job of counting heads, how many people come to us for consultations, how many people attend our workshops, and how many people take advantage of our services. We've also been good about counting satisfaction of our services with the smiley face ranking as it's called in talent development. 
we get a little bit further than just satisfaction when we give them a half sheet quick evaluation where they write down responses to just a few questions like, what was one thing you learned today? What is one thing that still is unclear? Or what further questions do you have that we can help you with? We also do a good job for the most part at program evaluation, asking and answering those questions about our past events, such as the Summer Institute for Teaching and Learning. What did they like? What didn't they like? What topics did they suggest for future sessions? As well as gathering the attendance numbers. What we don't do a good job of is going beyond that to try to gather data on implementation. For example, if a faculty member comes to one of our workshops or sessions and then implements what they learned, did it affect change in their teaching practice? Was it difficult? Were they successful? If it was difficult but they're persisting, do they need more support from us? We're just not asking these kinds of questions. Again, we've got qualitative comments from various faculty who come back and say things like, oh, that was incredibly helpful. I'm in a much better place this semester. Or, hey, we learned about a particular methodology or technology implementation from another faculty member. Can you help us with that? But we're not really gathering good data that shows not only the impact that we're having on changing teaching practice, but also the scope or the reach across the university or institution of our programs and our services. This has been the focus of the POD network ever since the first Faculty Development Center was created. But it has been more urgent in the past decade, as higher ed as a whole is being held to a higher level of accountability. We need to demonstrate our efficacy, but I would argue that this is not only for our external constituents, but also for our own benefit. As we encourage faculty to measure student learning outcomes as demonstration of student learning, we are encouraged to measure faculty learning outcomes as a demonstration of the impact on teaching and learning practice at our institutions. Fortunately, we have research upon which to base our impact studies. There are three pieces that I am currently working with to create the impact evaluation at my, of my center at Western Carolina University. Susan R. R. Hines published a very excellent article Evaluating Centers for Teaching and Learning a Field-Tested Model, June 2017 issue of To Improve the Academy. We also have the ACE Pod Matrix that was published on the Pod website in 2018, as well as the Defining What Matters Pod Occasional Report that was a collaboration of many of the Pod members. Two of these are freely available on the Pod Network website defining what matters, and a teaching and learning matrix. If you're a member of POD, you can access the Heinz article from the journal to improve the academy. If you're not a member, you can request it through interlibrary loan. So let's begin with a field-tested model, Heinz publication. It consists of four phases. The first one is to identify the center's evaluation capacity. The next phase would be curriculum conceptualization. That would be articulating the center's outcomes, organizing the services and offerings into distinct programs, mapping the programs to the outcomes, and writing program goals and offering, offering outcomes for each. The third phase is evaluation planning, where you determine the evaluation levels for each program. You confirm those with a logic model and identify evaluation methods and strategies. You also need to identify a person or people who are responsible for gathering data and determine the timing for data collection. And then the fourth phase is the plan implementation, where you're actually collecting the data, analyzing it, interpreting, and using it. Next, let's take a look at the ACE Pod Center for Teaching and Learning matrix. The matrix is a result of a collaboration between POD and the American Council on Education to revise the original ACE matrix based on input gathered at the POD conference. The matrix is organized so that centers for teaching and learning can identify their de development in 12 domains of practice across three levels.
The 17 domains are organized into three general areas, organizational structure, resource allocation and infrastructure, and programs and services. The three levels are development in their language. Beginning developing is not a judgment of lacking, but rather it's an emerging level representing evolving practice in educational development. The next level is proficient or functioning, and this is at the competent level. And then we've got accomplished exemplary, exemplary. And this would be a desired level representing base practice, best practices in educational development. Center directors and staff can use this matrix as a frame for goal setting or for strategic planning or to assess the current state of the CTL. And it makes planning visible to help engage academic leaders in conversations about expectations and impact and advocate for funding and resources that align with these expectations or these goals. Provosts, deans, and other academic leaders can use the matrix to develop a new teaching and learning center that's aligned with an institutional mission or to examine structure um, that contributes to the institutional teaching, learning, teaching and learning goals. It also can be used to support an existing center for teaching and learning for the purpose of highlighting the importance of teaching and learning on campus and assessing whether additional resources um, might be needed to help the center be more appropriate to the organizational structure. And it might be used to assess the role and the impact of the center within the broader institutional context with consideration of the institutional mission, continuous improvement, strategic planning and accreditation. This matrix was devised to be de developmental in nature, not judgmental, since all centers are different based on the context of the situation. The ACEPOD matrix is available on the POD Network site, and it's available through a Creative Commons license. A group of POD members collaborated on this document to use these four lenses, or what I call four metaphors, for evaluating key possible dimensions of a center's work. They are the hub, the incubator, the temple, and the sieve. These are derived from a heuristic developed by others to categorize the literature on purposes of higher education. Although many CTLs will see all of these dimensions in their work, no one center should have to encompass all of these functions, and some centers may see other dimensions. Because each center is unique in its makeup, in what its mission is, and the context in the institution, this provides the most open way for a center to be able to tell its story. The hub represents the centrality of many centers on campus because many centers make connections between people who would not otherwise be connected and we have a view into the university that's unique and we can build on that to support initiatives and work towards cultural change. This was one of the lenses that was named most frequently in the work that was presented at that conference. The incubator represents that many of the faculty participants from intensive year-long programs have taken important administrative positions. So we are looking at a growth of leadership aspect in our work. And these faculty can now influence their department or the whole university towards teaching and learning. The incubator role really is rooted in the 
in our educational development's traditional focus on nurturing and engagement, second most frequent lens in 2017. The temple represents that we are a sanctuary on campus where faculty can come to talk and think about teaching and learning, and not just faculty, but staff and administrators as well. So the temple provides legitimacy, credibility, and authority, and even recognition for instructors through the support of teaching and learning and educational development. It also makes teaching and learning more legitimate and raises it up to a, profession, a, a worthy part of the teaching and learning profession. It's also a place where faculty can find hope and inspiration as well as space for exploring pedagogy, technology, and various methodologies. The CIV really captures what a lot of us feel we do, which is that we read the research and we share the best. So we separate out the chaff from the really good fine soil. We play a vetting role. And essential in that is the value of evidence-based practice. So we read the research about the evidence on student learning and teaching effectiveness. And this is playing a greater role in educational development as institutions strive to adopt data-driven priorities. So we filter in and we filter out as needed in different contexts. Centers are looked to as sources of, exper of expertise about the research base for educational practice and work with instructors and academic programs to implement these ideas and grow innovations. On the other hand, we also might play a helpful role in slowing down or opposing a new pedagogical initiative by bringing in the research, asking the hard questions about goals, and gathering feedback from key campus constituencies. Interestingly, this role was the least selected at the 2017 conference. And it might reflect a center's hesitancy to say no. My work with this uh, publication, Defining What Matters, is that I'm more of a qualitative researcher, and so I like to tell the story. And when I look at these four lenses or four metaphors in my center, I can really see ourselves in all four of them, but very strongly in a couple of them. And we're going to use this, or we are using this. Um, everybody is examining these three lenses and describing how their own individual position or the role they play reflects in these metaphors. And then we're going to bring it together to write our center's story. And then from there, we're going to be, we're at the point where we can do um, the next five year strategic plan and goals. And what I really like about this, I think it's going to be able to help us tell our story more broadly about how we are immersed in the teaching and learning scholarship life of our institutions. Before I got started on this work, I was very interested in finding out how others were using these resources. So I posted multiple times, inquiries multiple times out on the pod discussion group and got very little response and connected with another pod member who conducted a session at the last conference um, and everybody who came, none of them, um, it was specifically on the ACE pod matrix and none of them were using the matrix at all. And so that sort of raises a question of why we've got these three wonderful instruments and why they're not being used more broadly. And a couple of things that came back from people when I've been talking about this is that it seems like it's hard, okay? There seems to be a huge gap between reading the articles, looking at the matrix, and actually doing the work of evaluation. And one person that I talked to, and she's been hired at her university and her center full time to develop this center evaluation. And um, she's like, I'm full time, but what if you were a center that had limited resources and perhaps you could only identify that you had 10% of one person's time to do this? Well, then what would that look like? And could you use one or the other of these instruments or 
um, a, sort of a pared down version of this in order to be able to at least start this work of center evaluation. So in my center, we are going to be using all three of these resources, and actually we have started using all three of them. So we, are, we started with Heinz, and we went through phase one to determine our capacity, because if you're not, um, if you don't have capacity to do this kind of work, um, you, there really isn't any reason to pursue the next four phases. So we did that and we determined that yes, we do have enough data and we do have interest and motivation and we do have capacity to be able to um, move on with telling our story. Next, right now, we are working through the Defining What Matters paper and these four metaphors or four lenses and I'm asking each individual member of my center to identify their role and how they see themselves as personally fitting into any of these lenses, uh, maybe one more strongly than another one. Then we'll collect those stories and put them together and then write a um, collaborate on our, our entire center's story. And this is going to help guide us then in our strategic planning for the next five years. If we can tell our story, which is what I do as a qualitative researcher, if we can tell our story, I think that's going to help us be uh, more accurate in identifying our goals, in asking the questions of administration what their goals for the center are, for us to be able to be a little creative and innovative and dream a little bit of where we want to be in five years. And then we're using the pod ACE matrix sort of as a wrap up to um, when I first started a year ago, I went through it and identified where I felt the current state of the center is. But then we will do that again after we're done telling our story. And all three of these pieces will be part of our um, strategic planning for the next five years. And I think this just gives us language. It gives us good questions to ask. It gives us um, uh, pieces of evidence that maybe we didn't consider that we can um, bring to bear on our story. Um, and it just aligns things very nicely for my center, but that's only my center. And I'm not saying that this is a recommendation that I would have for other people. But these three pieces are worth looking at and seeing if maybe you see your center and the work that your center does um, just a little bit in one of these instruments in order to be able to tell your story and really lift up your center's work. We're all doing really good work. Um, lift up and celebrate your center's work and also as um, some, some marketing material to get the word out broadly across the university about how you partner with faculty to help them improve their teaching and learning and scholarship. So anyway, this is how we are telling our story. I appreciate you um, taking time to listen to this recording presentation. It's obviously not as um, interactive as it would have been had we been able to assemble in Bellevue. Um, I'm not sure if Eli is still doing the evaluation, um, but if you've got any comments or questions or anything, please don't hesitate to contact me um, at my email, e, e. Collins Brown at Western Carolina University, um, because I'm pretty passionate about this work and would love um, other collaborators, or if you have questions or comments or anything, um, I would welcome that. So thank you very much um, for listening to my presentation, and I hope you are all doing well, staying well, and staying safe. Thank you.